And as Amanda just mentioned, annual passes were slated to go on sale at 6 this morning, and it looks like the queue opened about 45 minutes later than expected. This is a live look right now, more than an hour wait to get in. And joining us this morning is our good friend, Lou Mangello. He is host of WDW Radio on board the Disney Fantasy this morning. Lucky you. <laughs> Good morning, Amy. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. What a beautiful backdrop, Lou. And it's actually real as opposed to the fake ones that people put up, right? <laughs> so it is. I want to talk to you about these annual passes coming back because this was a big thing. And, and, you know, when they made the leadership change at Disney and they put Bob Iger back in there, people were like, Bob, bring back the passes. Do you think that that may have had a little bit of something to do with it? I'm sure it did, but I think AB2, it's also the passage of time. Um, you know, obviously, recovering post-pandemic brought its own set of challenges. And I think, too, there's other considerations that, that come into play, too, which is, first and foremost, is guest satisfaction. And I think sometimes, you know, if you think way back pre-pandemic, you know, there were times that we would go to the parks and they would seem very, very crowded. Like, why are they selling so many tickets? So I think they took the time to really think about what is that ideal number of guests that can be and should be in the parks at some time so that everybody still has access, but it doesn't feel overly crowded. Yeah, that's such a good point, right? It's such a balance because they need to make money, but at the same time, nobody wants to stand in line for six hours to go on. It's a small world. Okay, I, I want to talk about they, they're saying limited number of passes. What do you think that means? I think it means a limited number of passes, and I'm just <laughs> saying, <laughs> because we, we don't know, right? We don't know sort of what that magic number is, because like you said, there is that balance between wanting to satisfy guests that want that annual pass. Um, it's a supply and demand issue, and, you know, we don't know what that number is, but again, I think that's why the reservation system is still in place. I think that's why there's going to be, at least for today, a limited number of passes that are going to be sold. Right, and, and we saw that there's just even a, a line just to get in to buy the passes. They're saying people are having to wait about an hour or so. What do we know about past years, about how quickly the passes have sold out pre-pandemic? I, I think this year is going to be very different. I think there has been such a pent-up demand for people to go and get back. You know, it, only Disney fans will get up, take a day off work to say, take my money as fast as you possibly can, whether it's a run Disney event or it's annual passes. And I think it just goes to show how passionate we are and how much we love and appreciate this place. Lou, when you look at that, the list of, you know, options from Pixie all the way down to, you know, the, the, the best pass that they have available, what, what do you see as far as value is concerned? You know, sort of what comes with the passes if people have never bought them before? I think the real decision you have to make, Amy, when you look at that is obviously, again, balancing the financial aspect versus when you travel to Disney and how you travel. So if you know that you're not going to go during holidays, you're not going to go during spring break, you know, maybe you're not going to go during the week because you work and your kids are in school, that should really help determine what pass you and your family get. I know some people that parents get one pass, <laughs> kids get another pass because, you know, they'll only go on weekends. Right. But you do have to sort of, you know, make a very personal, uh, subjective choice. Yeah, and I think, you know, people sometimes too don't know that, you know, parking is included and you get discounts on food because that can get expensive. So there are some yeah. other perks that go with it. Yeah, and in the past, sometimes I know people would get one of the lower passes and a month or two in, they decide that they want to go more often. They see the, the value in it and they'll upgrade their passes if they're available. You don't even know what type of upgrades might be available after if passes sell out today. Lou, did you get yours? Uh, I am. I am. Okay, I had never lost my annual pass. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I figured if anyone's on it, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoy the rest of your cruise, my friend. So exciting for you, Lou Mangello, talking to us live aboard the Disney Fantasy this morning. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Amy. Take care.